Okay, so by now many of you have probably seen the photo I put up on Facebook. The uh, dirty cougar got center punched directly in the nose, bad accident. Everybody's okay, but we're, uh, we're running around some junkyards in the Nashville area trying to find some parts and we were, we're finding some gems. So let's start with this beauty. Your typical early 80s Ford Econoline. It's hot garbage. It's probably got a 351 that's not worth shit. But in here, oh la la, somebody went to trouble. This was a sin bin at some point. You know it. Hey, dude, you want to grab the uh, tools on the... Uh... Yeah, I, got I got to walk back up the line here on this one. So we're hunting fox parts and... You know, this is a neat little, uh, this is an LTD, might as well be a Fairmont. It's the same body, just a different nose clip. This one's actually not too bad. The seats for a junkyard are very passable. The interior is pretty decent. Um, if we need anything interior, we'd be golden. The nose clip isn't horrible either. I just don't think it's what we were wanting. But if you had a Fairmont that had body damage up front, this clip on a Fairmont looks badass. They really do. So prior to the Charger and the Challenger showing up, this was their best effort at a coupe. This is a early to mid 2000s uh, Dodge Stratus R. Well, this one's a Stratus SE. Oh no, 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 no. The bright, the bling. These, they're not muscle. They're not anything really. They're not what it is. It's a Mitsubishi Eclipse, like the really odd Tyrese and Fast and Furious generation Eclipse. I actually wanted one of these at one point in time. The RT with the five speed. All right, moving on. All right, another Stratus. Didn't think I'd do two of them in one video, but this, this was when the Stratus came out. These are what Chrysler called cloud cars because it was the Dodge, how'd it go? The Dodge Stratus, the Chrysler Cirrus, and the Plymouth Breeze. And on their own, I mean, this was when Chrysler was throwing anything at the wall to see if it'd stick. They looked good. They didn't last, but do yourself a favor and look up the North American Touring Car Championship race. These things in the hands of some potent racers were wicked. Hello, Karma. So this isn't my Imperial. This is the last Imperial. So what they did, Chrysler in the very early 90s stretched the K car for like the ninth time Put a waterfall grill on it. Put the little specialty badges with the Imperial Eagle on it. And sold them. Now, in the early 90s, the K car was starting to get stale. It still had a life. And I mean, you can't knock them for trying. Look at that seat. Trust me. We owned a New Yorker uh, Landau about this generation. My grandfather had one. And that car was comfy. But this is an Iacocca mobile to the core. The strip tail lights, the thick padded diaper roof, the waterfall grill, the hidden headlights. I'm amazed this thing doesn't have opera windows and I might be wrong, it may actually have them. I don't know. I don't see them. Uh, they are powered by 3.3 V6, nice little minivan engine. But yeah, this is an Imperial. It's a Chrysler Imperial. It's the last vestige of it, but I mean, they at least got this luxury part right. They were comfy cars, but ugh. It's an active air dude. Holy shit, dude. Drop the hood. I, I can barely get it. So, 05 Charger, LX car, this is a basic V6. That is a full functioning, this would be like a 71 Challenger scoop. Dude, that... Yeah, if you got a... Oh, it's bolted, dude. Check that out. Mm -hmm. oh. It's not the worst one I've seen. Apparently, somebody else liked it, too, because, uh, well, yuck. It still smells like a fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you recognize this gauge cluster, you might be thinking Prowler or something, and you're not too far off. This is the first time I've actually sat in one of these. This is a first-generation Dodge Intrepid. When these cars came out in 93, these were the shit. Um, after so many years of K cars, Dodge pulled the stops out on these. Um, Chrysler Corporation, they had the Concorde and the Eagle Vision. These things were lookers. Um, 
finding one on the road now is a bit of a shot because the transmissions were craptacular and there's a few other issues but the, as far as looks go very few cars in the early 90s pulled off this kind of swag like this i'm impressed even in the junkyard it looks like it could be fun and something i've always wondered now that i'm here where's the place are you going to release oh come on oh. So what you're looking at here is a 3.5 high output. This is in a, I believe that's a 300M, though I could be possibly wrong. That might be a con. No, it is a 300M. I've always wanted to rear drive convert these because they're actually a north-south front drive layout, which means there is hope that you can actually run a transmission tunnel to the back. These were designed by, uh, and I'll correct myself with text, but I believe his name was Francois Casting. Uh, he came over from American Motors and Chrysler absorbed them in 87. And they're not much for looks, but they're much for aero. I always have wanted to put a 5.7 Hemi in one of these and just see what the aerodynamic and weight improvements would be. It's a thought. So everybody loves a truck up until it gives them one slight problem, and then they trash it. And we're out here, there's no difference. 94 2002 ramp somewhere in there um, i couldn't pinpoint without looking at the year so this would be half ton probably well let's find out half ton 318 basic truck transmission probably did this one in unless we want to say you know years of abuse and neglect possibly a fire holy god what year is this thing? Like 7980? 78. 78 F. Yeah, I'm sure. Probably three. No, it's a half ton. Five lug. Somebody call Kevin at Junkyard Digs. He'd be down here getting this fucker to start in a matter of hours. 460. No shit, 460. Engine family, 460D. All right, Kevin, you're being called out. Come wake this one up. Damn. You've done more with less. That Bronco's proof. Yeah, the badges are all going off of it. Yeah. Moving on. The Reaper takes them all. Wait, is this an S type or an X type? I think this is an X type. all wheel drive. Oh. Rear wheel drive. Should be rear drive. They made them an all wheel drive. They did, and they made a manual transmission, which this one sadly is not. But this is the Genesis car for the uh, redone Ford Thunderbird, the retro bird, and the Lincoln LS. The V8 in this car is magical. We've seen them being just get the shit kicked out of them at King of the Heap. They come back for more as long as you keep them off the wall. Anything of interest over here? Where's that burned shell at? It's, it's up that road, up the row here. No, that's it right here. Right there, right there on the left. I thought it was burnt. It's stripped. That's a Miata. Yeah, this is a Miata too. Yep. Well, I thought this was burnt, but no, it's just gone. Yeah. Yep. Something probably hiccuped and they tossed it. Unless it's bashed up front. Oh, it's six. Nothing cares. Still the kidney beans out of it. Or probably on somebody's, some teenager's took wall. took out of it. Yeah. All right, moving on. Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, eat this gem. Now, if I speak Subaru well enough, and I'm not saying I do, I'm pretty sure this is what's known as a blob eye era Impreza. Um, it's definitely not a hawk or a round eye for sure, so if I'm wrong, correct me. But I just get the feeling, just off the rear bumper alone, and maybe a little bit of this, that this was teenage owned and teenage wrecked. Um, if I had to guess, I'm going to say uh, foam pole. Yeah. Yeah, foam pole. Yeah. And it's not a Rex, it's a run-of-the-mill. Cool hood scoop. 
Oh, it did have a, it might be. Um, yeah, it doesn't say. STI. Oh, bullshit, that's an STI. It, is it seriously an STI? Yeah, the sticker says right there. The white sticker over in the corner of the hood, it says STI, manual auto and STI. Oh, okay. So it's a turbo car, isn't it? Somewhere. Where's, where's the turbo? non-existent i probably somebody probably took it well whatever this thing's dead you know what kills a brick volvo incompetence or the inability to pay for repairs i love these things i don't care and it, it's taken me a minute to admit that i do love these things but 20 god knows how many hundreds of thousands of swedes rally these things in the woods cannot be wrong yeah, you're damn right, made in Sweden. You go on YouTube, you can see a bunch of these wrecked in Sweden too, right in the forest. But these are the kind of cars where you can wreck them, rebuild them, and go back to racing. And for that alone, they have my respect. They aren't that fast. I can't say they're that powerful. I've never experienced one that was. But for sheer brutality and rebuildability, you can't knock it. That's a late model Altima. This is why driving around Nashville sucks. I guarantee you that's where that happened. So I praise the uh, early Chrysler LH cars for being radical, but this is a uh, probably 95, six, seven inch old Aurora. It's the uh, four liter short star V8. So it's basically, you know, it's, it's North star derived, but the lines on this car, when this car came out, this thing was radical, really radical. I mean, you saw one of these, you know, no pillar doors, Swept interior is gorgeous. It's an STI rally. Oh, dear God. Yeah, we'll have a gem for you here in a second. But these things were good until the North Star problems happened. But North Star or not, I still, these are still one of the most gorgeous designs GM ever co cobbled together. And then we're going to move directly from there to, uh, yep. Yeah, because nobody wanted it. So you just suction cup the Tupperware and it'll pop right out. Exactly. <laughs> I don't understand the cult fascination with these. Oh, come on, it's an Aztec. Yeah, I know it's an Aztec. It's a 3400 Aztec. Oh, great. So it's an engine that's a fucking nightmare to work on while we're at it. Yeah, it's 3400. Yeah, exactly. Go bigger, go home. So if you're wondering why Chris is geeking and I'm not. I love Aztecs. I love anything Pontiac. We'll just we'll leave it at that. True, but this is like play school Pontiac. I'm more of I basically kind of lose it after the early '90s. What CD? Promo only disc four. <laughs> oh dear God! <laughs> and it's like a record. It's got dude. Wild. There's another one. No shit. Dude, the truck has a CD player. We could figure out what these are. This, this, folks, is why you go to a junkyard. The Dude. shit that's left behind. Now, I will credit Pontiac with some good ideas with the Aztec. They basically caught sight of the crossover market, and they did try. That I, I can't fault them for that. They tried. They failed horribly, but they tried. And all that's closed. But you look at it, like the folding seats, the... Uh, the storage spaces, even the kind of back-mounted uh, tent was a good idea. The problem was is that if you look at the original styling designs of an Aztec, it looked like it was a perfect idea. And then they fucked it up. It has a center mount. Oh, shit handle for your passenger. Does it? It does. Wow. Okay. I didn't even know about that. So that is what that is. Dude, that thing is growing hair. Put it back. Look. What is it? The singles. Flip it over. Dude. I... I don't I, think I, it's growing I, hair as much as it's stuck to the carpet. Oh, dear God. Get that fucking thing away from me before I get Mercer or something. It's like a... It's a record company promo. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if an early Sturgill Simpson song's on it. <laughs> now I want to feel like I need to decontaminate. Let's step down here and oh my god, dude, my history lesson has arrived. 
Okay, so yes. no, it's a Joseph Abood edition, a almost direct copy of the car I had. So this is a ballpark 9704 Regal GS. And if you look down here on the door, you will notice the body cladding coloring that's really stylish. This is a Joseph Abood edition, some random designer I know dick about. Um, I owned one of these back around 2005 to 2000, when did I get rid of it? Eight, and I loved it. Absolutely adored the car. It was a street sweeper. There were a lot of people in, Supercharged. this one was, and mine was too. That's why the engine's gone. Oh, I guarantee you that's why the engine's gone. Um, I didn't do much tweaking to it, and it was a mid-13 second car, which means it was right up there with my Chrysler. If you can find one of those and it's running and driving, as long as it's got a blower, it's worth your time and effort. See the nose of the black car sticking out on the right? Third one up on the right? Yeah, that's a uh, 80s Eldorado. Oh, okay. There's another caddy down here, too. It's one of the fancy ones. How fancy. Yeah, fancy. <laughs> that's a CPS, isn't it? No, over there? Yeah. yeah. No, it might be an STS. I don't know. These art science cars got weird. Um, let's see here. Yeah, this is an STS. So this is still front drive North Star. Do you remember the all-wheel drive Astro Vans? Yeah. Oh, it's dude. Conversion. And the uh, NASCAR Jelly Bean Monte Carlos. I would love to V8 swap one. Yep, Chevy Astro, another one of GM's better ideas, and these were good. So, it's not completely an S10 truck, but there's a lot of it to like. Um, a lot of Caprice parts, uh, big car parts. There's a cult fascination with these, and unlike the uh, Aztec, I get the cult fascination here. That's an old Cadillac. It's got old, old. Is that a 4.9 car? much of the grind away because i don't want to that a boss who had one of these it's, got a it's a tbi car so it's uh yeah it's early these are the problematic ones look fluid usage and it's color coded right next to the can of copenhagen <laughs> what are you gonna bet they're both v6 cars i don't know the, uh, because the v8, the v8 cars that year they're both v6 they're matching they're both solid roofs. They're... Dude, they're identical. Fuck. Okay, I gotta look at VIN numbers and see how close together they are. Yeah. See, all right, so the F-Body changed in 93, both Camaro and Firebird. And usually you'll see the Trans Am nose where on the early cars, the LT1 cars, you come down into a shovel nose and you have two fog lights in the center. This nose on a V8 car means that you have a formula. I don't like the Trans Am nose. I love the Formula nose. It kept it kind of smooth, sleek, Firebird mark. Look at the decals. They come from the same dealership. This one says all done Pontiac on the back. Are they flood cars? That's the only thing I can think of. Okay, look. That one, that one is 4 of 94. This one is 7 of 94. That's... Uh, Wow. Yeah. That's this is the strangest coincidence I've ever seen in a junkyard. They're, they're identical. Yeah. Right down to the shitty ass three point four meter. Same wheels, same is is it same the same color. paint? It is. It looks that way. Yeah. Get this side and look directly at them. No. No. That no, it's a little bit more blue. I think it is the same coat, it's just a matter of sun fade. Well this one looks like it's got a pearl to it. Yeah. That one doesn't, but still that's weird. That's really weird. All right. That's something you don't see every day. Uh, you ain't lying. I bet you the flood. Wait. When was the flood in Nashville? Not too long ago. They, was, they might have 2010. been. 2010. There's no way they've been waiting this long. No way. No, no, no. I'm not saying they have. I'm just saying when the flood happened in 10, the dealerships that are downtown got hit hard with all the cars being underwater. Right. This could be flood cars. This late? Not that's this late. They could they could have been sitting here five or six years. I don't know. Because the rear end's missing out of that. As one. as complete as they are, I would have thought somebody would have been body hunting. There's enough racers around here, but <laughs> that and the interiors aren't really showing me. It doesn't me. smell flood. It doesn't smell flood. I don't see tide mark. These <laughs> look like they're okay. Stick your face in there. 
fuck <laughs> you. It's a junkyard car. Come on, dude. Have some realism. There's aluminum. Nah, moving on. All right. So I've got a phrase called automotive cockroach. And these, these are the front drive GMA bodies. And these cutlasses in particular are notoriously long lived. In fact, there's three I drive past every day when I leave the house. This one ain't going nowhere anytime soon. It's done. She took a good hit in the back. But people love them. I don't know why, but hey, when you make a good car, you make a good car. And even though it is kind of based on the Citation, which has a reputation, eventually they got it really, really right. You always wonder when somebody buys one of these conversion vans, what the hell happens to them? Remember the old two-door aluminum, like those aluminum? There's a two-door one. No shit. Sadly, this might be one of the oldest cars we've seen in the lot. It's, it's fairly complete too. There's scary too. Dude, people want these things. I know a guy who's swapping, uh, he's LS4 swapping one. Mm -hmm. And then I know a guy who's uh, done a LT1 conversion using an F-body platform. Yeah. How does that feel? No, it's... How does that seat go back? Oh, you're looking for the hood. Hold on. Where's the hood latch? Where is the hood latch in this damn thing? Oh, dude, you ought to see the starting. I think that's the starting mechanism I'm looking at. You want to see some beautiful wiring? Check this shit out. Look right there. Mm-hmm. What is Holy it? Shit. What is it? American Graffiti. <laughs> 41 Original Hits by the 41 Original Artist. Oh my God. Dude, the door's shut like new. Hey, who the fuck is Bob Willis? I don't know. Ooh, scotch guarded fabric protector for when you scare the shit out of somebody. Nine of clubs. All right. Lumina Euro. Yeah, I'd like to have the steering wheel to put my spark in. The steering wheel's good. I wish I had brought the puller, but we don't know. The thing is, is that, can you imagine? This car's a man. Imagine being like, you know, 91 and we've quit making this Monte Carlo Super Sport and this is what you get. There's a reason why a lot of these go away. So, if you think the uh, Fiat 500 with the three-door thing is a new deal, that's an early 2000s Saturn Coupe. It ain't new. It's says it all over the car and even on the back. Comp G was a handling package. I don't remember the, all the details. This should be either a blower motor or a V8. Okay, so that's a blower motor, 3.8, the good one. Comp G was like a handling package. Check the uh, tire sizes. I'm willing to bet it's staggered to be wider in the front. I think that's what it was. But yeah, you had big brakes. You had... Uh, sharper struts. You had the whole nine. You. Fifteen, fifty-five, seventeen on the back. Those should be like two thirty-five, I think. Two fifteen, fifty, seventeen on the front. So it's square. Close but enough. still, I mean, that's a good size brake for a family sedan. Oh, shit. I don't remember if there's anything that special about these, really. Handling oh, interior had, had the slap shift and a couple other things. 
I never liked this generation Grand Prix. It just looked, felt cheap. Another Junkyard Classic, Lumina APV. The Dust Buster minivan, which if I remember right, is actually still being produced in one form or another in China. And this one's got your steering wheel too. Shit, yeah, I need to come back down here, dude. But yeah, that nose. And this is an early one, too. It's got the pointy beak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... So I date, I graduated high school in 2001, if you want to gauge where my age is. And growing up, you either had a Chrysler minivan, a green Ford Explorer, you had one of those. It's uh, early 90s Grand Prix, like 91, 92. Yeah. So the sedans had the light bar like a Mercury Sable, and then the coupes had the regular headlight over here, and then Not you had... Five. 95? Five. Okay. And then you had the Pontiac Twin Snout Grill Low. Um, we should probably go ahead and hit the Fiero while we're here. <laughs> so we spotted this on the way in before I started filming. I don't fit in this well. Um, I'm not promoting his channel much or anything, but if you want to see an interesting restoration, um, Ronald Finger, and I can't remember, is it, I'll put his, uh, channel here, uh, is restoring one of these, he's wrapping it up, his is a regular, it's not the, uh, GT nose like this. Where did the barge go? I just saw it. So let's see, we have... Which one is this? Okay, this is a Cadillac SLS. So Seville, large sedan, luxury sedan. I don't remember. I do know that this is one of the few Cadillacs imported to Europe and they got absolutely, utterly destroyed and oppressed when they got hold of them. Opal by Saturn, nobody cares. A very rotted. Is that Park Avenue or Le Sabre? Le Sabre. A mid to late 90s Cutlass W body. Before Oldsmobile really started circling the drain. Um, uh, we'll cut here. We thought we saw a land barge, like a. Thought maybe a Buick Roadmaster or a Cadillac uh, Brome or something like that, but. Oh well. All right, moving on. So, Desolation Row. These are cars that might have a prayer left. So, a couple trucks, a couple SUVs. Somewhere down there is like Grand Marquis or something. Um, so, you figure 1500 bucks, come in, get yourself a car. Grand Marquis is actually very clean. So we went ahead and switched yards, didn't find what we were looking for. And this is right out the front door. She's a beast. This is 75, 76 ish. Oh, big oh yeah, that's at least 425. What's it say on the thing? That's a 500. Oh, yeah. That's the big boy. Caddy 500 front drive. TTM 425. Drop top. Oh, this is a heartbreaker and a half. Look at the drums on the back of the stinking. Oh, they're monster. This whole car is monster. This is a Chevy Suburban as a two door co uh, convertible. These things are the scale on these. I mean, it's hard not to love these things, but at the same token, you understand when people make fun of them for their size, they are fucking huge. That's massive, dude. My Suburban's not that big. All right, moving on. Well, in a rare stroke of luck, Constantly we actually now. found something we're looking for. So these headlight turn signal assemblies are the same ones they use on a Mercury Cougar. So we actually have something we're looking for. You didn't bring a screwdriver. There's gotta be a way to get a screwdriver here. There has to be. Well, we'll figure it out, we gotta get to work. One eyeless Continental, whole bunch of prizes. So we got what we came for. 
We're gonna do. We're gonna walk around a little bit, or sure. All we're right. Packing this shit. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well. Because on the the Cool Cats website, mm -hmm. it states that 88 to 94 Continental headlights are the same as Mercury Cougar for 87, 88. And because we forgot screwdrivers of all the stupid ass things I've done, we just used, you know, tire changing tools. When you're at a junkyard, be resourceful. All right. What the hell? <laughs> All right, we're moving on. <laughs> I don't want to touch it. I don't want to be near it. Moving on. You may have. <laughs> 